Hello everyone, so in this particular video we will be trying to implement YOLO V8 for images in Python. So the first thing that we need to do is install some libraries. We'll say pip install ultralytics ultralytics and then dash q. <coughs> dash q. We will also need one more library dash install pyyaml pyyaml dash q. So basically we are using dash q so that we don't get unnecessary outputs. Ultralytics obviously we will be using this for YOLO and YAML file we will be using for the outputs. We will see why. So we will let it run. The next thing that we need to do is to instantiate or import these libraries. So for this we will say ultralytics from ultralytics we need YOLO all capital YOLO and then we will also import PyML or let's say YAML only and then we also need CV2 and lastly we will need one Google patch so from Google dot collab dot patches import CV2 show. so we will run this and let it run for a second okay so the first thing we need to do is to inst instantiate the YOLO class so for that we will do model equal to YOLO open close bracket now if if you already are familiar with this you would know that if you want to have a model we need to go to the documentation and then you can see over here when you go to the detection part you can see there are five models and they are in the increasing number of parameters and hence you will see that uh, first one that is YOLO V8N it has the least number of parameters but at the same time what happens it, it takes the least speed so as you go down the number of parameter increases but also the speed for inference and training also increases so that is a uh, trading that we have to do so in this example we will be using only the nano one so we will say YOLO V8N.PT dot PT so we will be using this model this is already pre-trained if you want to use an, another model for let's say fine tuning or if you want to fine tune then we will do it in some other video but here we will just be using uh, the pre-trained model so we will say model equal to YOLO and pass this and uh, yeah this much and we run this cell you can see already the model has been instantiated okay the next thing that we need to do is to actually um, predict so you can see I already have some images over here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say model dot predict and then I'm going to pass the path of the first image so if you look at the first image uh, there is an image of a dog that is standing on a cat so this is not a real image I have basically created this image using uh, stable diffusion uh, yeah stable diffusion so what I need to do is first copy the path so here I'll go and then I will say copy path and then I'm going to paste it over here paste it over here I also need to pass in some parameters so I will say save equal to true and save text equal to true now what these will do this will basically save all the checkpoints and the result and this text will the save text equal to true will actually create a text file now if you really want to know more parameter uh, more parameters and uh, you what you can do is basically go to the official ultralytics website the link is in the description even the github link is in the description you can go there and then you can go to the configuration folder and then you can search for predict and then you will see a lot of parameters are there okay so if you have some doubt or you want to use some other parameters you can go there Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift and enter. Okay, so as you can see, some of these results are being shown. But what I want to show you is, here is you can see results saved to runs detect predict. So this is the runs folder. I'm going to open this and then we have detect again open this. You'll have a predict folder and then if you open this, you will get a JPEG file. Now if you click double click on that you will get the same image but now you can see the uh, bounding boxes are there and the name of the class dog is there and the probability is also associated so it has found a dog with 0.74 probability and here it has found a car with 0.76 probability okay 
now you can see one more label folder is there so we will open this and then I'm going to show you the text file so if you open this text file you can see that there are two lines basically the uh, there are as many lines as there are number of objects detected so first is 16 followed by some numbers so this 16 is actually the class class number I'll show you how to find the class label in a second that is the next thing that we are going to do and there are some numbers these numbers are basically normalized um, center coordinates so this is X and Y these two and this one is width and this one is height I think this one is height oh, I'll show you what what it is in a, in, in a second and same thing for here okay so I'm going to close this and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a file name because I want to know what this 2 and what the 16 you can see over here 2 and 16 stands for okay so we will convert this class numbers into class labels now what I am done what I'm going to do is I already have the file name written somewhere okay so I'll be giving it in the description you can get it from there so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the so I have I have given this line in the description you can go, uh, directly go and copy so the thing was that the uh, the dictionary that is required to change the number this 2 and 16 to its corresponding class is there somewhere in the ultralytics library but it is deep inside so I don't want you to go and find because it will be time consuming I have given you directly okay it is there in this in the description you can go and get this line after that what we need is we will say with open file name file underscore name and then we are going to pass r which is basically meaning that we will be reading as stream okay and then what we are going to do is we are going to say names equal to yaml so this will help us pass this yaml file so you can see coco.yaml and for that we needed the yaml file we will say safe underscore load and then here we will be passing the stream and then we will use the only the names part and then we'll hit shift and enter okay so let it first run it has completed running now what we are going to do is we are going to show you the names so if i scroll up you can see there are numbers zero is referring to person one is referring to bicycle two is referring to car and so on it starts from zero and if you see it ends at 79 okay so it ends at 79 which basically means there are 80 classes okay so what I am going to do for now I am going to cut this one and I am going to see another thing. Now obviously I have shown you that this text file has uh, all the uh, class labels 2, uh, 16 and 2. So what I am going to do I am going to write some logic by which we can find the names. So first I have to open and read this file. So I am going to say list open and then I am going to pass the path of this file. So what I am going to do I am going to pass the path of this file and then I am going to read it and then say read lines because I'm going to read all the lines at once okay then I'm going to hit shift and enter and I'm going to print list let's see what's there inside this so if you can see we got the two outputs that was there in the file we got it as a list of strings so we'll have to parse this so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to get the class names because I already have the names where already the numbers are there number two um, name uh, mapping is there and I have the number so I need the names so first I'll do for L in list so for every uh, string in list what it is going to do is it is going to get the the first one so let's call it int so it will say int is equals to int of L dot split so we are going to split it uh, based on spaces because as you can see there are spaces in between there are spaces over here and we are going to take only the first one why because our interest is only in the first one right now we will be using this in some time okay and then what I'm going to do I'm going to print int with names of int okay now let's go and print this or rather run so you can see 16 this one 16 here now corresponds to dog and yes in our image there was a dog and 2 corresponds to car which means that it is able to predict both of them it is able to find both of them now half of the work is done we already know what labels are there and its names now what we need to do is we need to understand these bounding boxes so that we fully understand what the output means and how and we can use this in our own project so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write some code 
I will say li. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do only for one. Okay, so I'm only going to do it for the dog part. You can actually write a loop and uh, loop this logic, which I'm going to show you right now, and use it for even the car class or any number of classes that you have. So I'm going to say list dot split or list of one because um, the car uh, the the dog is in one dot split. Or you can actually do zero because the, we are doing it for dog and dog is at zero. Okay, split. And now what we know is we are we have got this entire thing and we have split it. You don't have to worry this uh, worry, worry about this slash nine because uh, what I have seen is that it automatically automatically corrects itself. But basically I mean is if you say float which we'll be using and then you pass let's say 0 0.21875 0 0.21875 and then at last pass this what you will see is you are getting the number itself as float and it does not care about the slash n so you don't have to care okay now what you are going to do is we are going to say xc comma yc now I'll, I'll tell you what this is xc yc nw and nh equal to float li of 1 so li of 1 is this this entire thing was li okay li of 1 is li of 1 is this much now what is this this basically is telling you that xc is going to have this value what is xc it is the x coordinate of the center okay this is how the values are given here so obviously yc will be li of 2 um, then what is going to be nh normalized width it is going to be float of li of 3 and lastly our nh that is normalized height is going to be li of 4 okay so we are going to hit this shift enter and let's see what values we have got or let's let, let's leave it till here we will see the value in the next line okay so now what we need is we have got the normalized coordinates now we need the and since these are normalized coordinates we need the uh, image size that is width and height in order to get the real coordinates because this is normalized in order to get the real coordinates we'll have to multiply with the height and width so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say image cv2.imread and since we used this image car and dog jpeg we will copy the path and we will write it over here okay now height comma width is equals to image dot shape of zero and image dot shape of one okay so our height will be image dot shape of zero and width will be image of sh image of shape of one so this has run now we can finally get our real coordinates so for that we will say xc which is the normalized coordinate it is equal to multiply equal to uh, w so whatever the x value xc value is there the center coordinate of uh, of the object we will multiply it with the width so that we now get the real center coordinate or uh, x value of the center coordinate similarly for yc we will need multiply equal to h and then for normalize width we will say multiply equal to width and normalized height we will say multiply equal to height now all these are uh, these are real coordinates and not normalized coordinates so let's say we want the top left now I'll be explaining what is why we want top left so if you can see in this image XC YC are basically the center coordinate and NW and NH after this multiplication have become the real width and real height now top left is needed because in order to uh, use this in CV2 we need the top left uh, coordinate of an object and the bottom right coordinate so we need to change it in such a way we are able to, so that we are able to get the top left and bottom right so we will say top left equal to int of xc minus n w by 2 okay and we will give a comma and then we will again say yc minus nh by 2 and what we are going to do is we are going to copy this entire thing and then paste it here and instead of top left we will say bottom right and instead of minus we will do plus why because xc was the 
center coordinate center x coordinate and we have uh, subtracted half of the width so we are getting the left coordinate the uh, left top coordinate and for uh, sorry the left x coordinate and the left y coordinate will be yc which is the center minus nh by 2 because nh was the uh, coordinate nh was the height not the coordinate sorry so this will give us the top left coordinate and this will give us the bottom right coordinate so we are going to run this particular cell now okay so once we have run it let's try to actually print the top left and bottom right so we will say top left and bottom right it is taking some time okay so it has finished running and now we are going to print this so we can see 13365 this is the top left coordinate and 220177 is the bottom right coordinate in order to make sure that it is correct what we are going to do is we are going to see the changes so we are going to see image equal to we are going to actually print the rectangle rectangle so for this we'll have to pass the image we'll have to pass top left we have to pass bottom right and then we have to pass the color 0255 Zero, and then we are going to pass the thickness, and at last we will show the image. So we will say image dot m show uh, cv two dot m show, and we will pass the image, and let's see what we get. So as you can see, we are able to successfully print the bounding box. So now, in this line over here, we had got the uh, the label dog, and in this line, we were able to successfully print the or find the bounding box. Now. this is done for one image what if we have a different image so you don't have to worry you have to do basically the same thing over here what i am going to do is i am going to copy this line over here and then i am going to print it over or uh, paste it over here okay then instead of this now we are going to use a different image this is the doggo image it's a very famous image if you are familiar with the previous versions of yolo if you remember this is a very famous image i think it came out in uh, before yolo 5 it came out before yolo 5 whatever you see a dog is there a bicycle is there a motorcycle is there and a truck is there okay so what we are going to do is we are going to copy the path copy path and instead of this now we are going to pass the new image okay so i think i again need to copy the path so this is copied now and print uh, paste now what you are going to do is we are going to run this particular cell and close this for a second so as you can see our output is finally here and we have some tensors over here but what we need to do is again it says that the results are saved to runs detect predict so we will go to runs we'll go to detect then predict and then i'm going to open this doggo.jpg so as you can see it has successfully found some of the variables so it has been it has it is successfully it has successfully found the dog the bicycle and it says it's a car okay fine so it could not find this so obviously the uh, we are using the nano model which is not that perfect you can definitely go and use let's say a um, medium size model so instead of saying um, yolo v8 n we will say yolo v8 m and then you can also get the other models as well however in this case we will not be doing it so again you can see over here also in the labels folder you are going to have doggo dot txt and again you can see that some uh, things are found obviously i have explained what these first numbers are and what these uh, normalized coordinates are and how to approach this bounding box problem so i think this is it for this video and i'll be uploading a lot of videos regarding object detection and yolo v8 thank you very much and bye